Hello and uh, welcome to Chemistry. Um, today's little video is how to use a Buchner funnel. Um, also, you know, we're basically trying to accomplish a task in your chemistry lab, and that's relative to a solution and a solute. Um, for example, here I have a green mixture, and there is some stuff dissolved in it or some stuff suspended in it. So I want to separate these two things and you know, maybe I want the solvent with the stuff dissolved in it separated from the stuff that's not dissolved or maybe I just want the stuff that's not dissolved or I just want to be able to separate them for whatever reason I, I am doing this. So our little picture here shows that we have three different solutions and some terms surrounding them. Um, I have my solution, this is the whole thing, the solute and the solvent. Um, I have something that might be considered a suspension where I have my solvent in there and this stuff is just kind of floating in there and given time um, it will separate out or I can um, separate out myself. Um, here everything's fallen to the bottom we often refer to this as a precipitate. A suspension given time will separate out on its own. Something that is truly dissolved will not separate from the solvent at, at any point. Um, if it's truly dissolved, you cannot filter it out. You cannot use a centrifuge to pull it out. It is in solution. Um, you could boil away the solvent, but that's about it. Or you could chemically react something to it and drop it out. But uh, that's called gravimetric analysis. Either way, um, the other term I have here is super not, and this is often uh, referred to as the chemical um, above the precipitate. If I were to separate these two things, the precipitate would be separated out and the stuff that's left over is the supernaut. S-U-P-E-R-N-A-T, in case you can't uh, see that. Alright, so that's our basic idea here. Um, some of the terms that um, we'll be using in this video or some of the things the uh, tools we'll be using are going to be what's called a sidearm flask. This is a sidearm flask. It looks like an Erlenmeyer flask, but it has a side um, piece to it for vacuum filtration. The this whole system using a vacuum filtration um, it just speeds the filtering process up. We could easily use gravimetric uh, gravity filtration, uh, but in some sense that might take a long time. All right, so sidearm flask. I have a Buchner funnel, um, B-U-C-H-N-E-R. Um, you can tell by the size of my hand, this is a fairly large container. These come in various sizes, bigger and smaller. Um, inside here, there are a bunch of holes, and I'll be placed my filter paper in here. Um, all right, I have a hose, which will hook to the side of the Erlenmeyer flask. Um, it just simply slides on like this. I would, however, caution against taking it off. If it gets stuck, be careful. I have already broken one of these trying to take it off. So if for some reason it's really stuck, you can cut it and then cut it off that way. It's just safer to do it, to do it that way. Um, only other piece of equipment you need is actually on the sink. And this is called an aspirator. Water goes down, drawing air through here. Um, the, um, in this case, the hose goes to the side arm of the aspirator, and when I turn it on, it starts to draw uh, gases through, and you'd be able to feel it right here. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to kind of walk through a couple things that you're going to want to be able to do um, as your lab progresses. The water will spray. It's not a big deal. Just deal with it. Okay. Um, so first things first, gather your materials. Gather yourself a sink station. Um, and I now have my beaker funnel. I have to get my uh, filter paper into the beaker funnel. Now, very often you're going to need to weigh this filter before you get started, um, depending on what your lab calls for. If you are trying to gather the precipitate, then yes, this will need to be weighed because you will do an initial and a final weighing that will tell you how much precipitate was there. Because once you filter onto this paper, it's hard to separate it from this paper. 
um, at least for analytical reasons. All right, so I have various sizes of paper, and um, you will find various ways in which people do things. When I was in college, we had used lots of Buchner funnels. The filter paper fit exactly in the bottom, okay? And that might be the way you see it. But since then, um, I've ran in various sizes and cut the holes and whatever, had a lot of different things, and I've found that a little better way I feel of doing it. So what I do is I take a larger filter paper, okay, it's right in Wade. Um, my solvent is, is water, so that I'm going to be filtering. So I'm, I'm not worried about using water on this at all. So I'm taking, going to take a um, distilled water squirter. And to get this filter paper in, in here, now watch carefully, okay, I will uh, do this. I'll just add a little ring of water around here and just gently wet this thing. And this will make it more malleable in order to get it into this particular container. As I push it down in here, I just want to make sure all my holes are in the bottom are covered. All right. um, you want to be careful not to tear it. Now what I, I like about this particular way of doing it is that if stuff goes up on the sides, you will not lose that material. You can pull the filter out and you even you have the sides covered. Um, for quantitative reasons, I like this method better. All right, it's all in there, I'm ready to go. I was gentle with it. Simply place it on top of the Buchner funnel. Okay, looks just like this. And plug this into the sink and turn it on. Okay, now at this point, all you need to do is you need to simply pour your contents into the bottom. Keep in mind, if it's actually dissolved in the solution, it will pass by the filter into the bottom. If it is not, then it will be stuck in the filter. So if it's insoluble, okay, so keep in mind, one of our main things here is things that are soluble will pass by the filter, things that are insoluble will not. Okay. That is one distinct way of separating things. Um, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing I, I might mention is a couple techniques for how you actually um, utilize um, or how you actually get this stuff into the funnel. Okay, um, and it's just you know just things that I've come across over the years. So as I turn this on. A few things that I'm going to want you to, to understand is one, I have my water container, okay? So I'm not worried about using a little more water except for the fact that I may need to evaporate off or I don't want to get too much volumes here based on what my lab is calling for. But a little bit of water, if this is water solvent, isn't really going to be a big of a deal. So when I pour these, this stuff in here, I want to make sure everything is out of this container. So as I pour it in, um, and I'm just going to start the water up here because it may get a little louder and we'll see how this works. Um, pour in the All right, at this point I would pour in my liquid and you know you could pour a little at a time you know just keep pouring a little bit, a little bit, a little bit and as the pressure builds you'll start to see it dropping through. All right. And you may need to crank the water up to a larger level. Okay, so I cut out some of the video just to for sake of time. Um, you want to carefully pour it in, and at this point you would you'd be asked, okay, well, this stuff is green on the bottom. That stuff ended up going through the filter because it's just food coloring and it is truly dissolved in the solution. On the other hand, you'll see in the bottom here, I have some sand and other things that was separated. A few things you want to be careful of is one, you know, what are you anticipating? Are you anticipating this stuff to be clear? Because if you are and it's not, you may have a hole in your filter. If that's the case, 
you can always weigh another filter and add it over the top and re pour this stuff back through again okay that's not against the rules it's commonplace um, also you'll notice that in my original beaker I still have some of my solid material uh, I can use this liquid pour it back in here and rinse this out like so pour this back in because I am trying if my goal of my experiment is to try and get all that solid into my filter then I can use this stuff again and refilter it through so I can trap more of it in the funnel okay now pouring this stuff back into the funnel um, is just a, a little bit of a technique where I like to swirl and then dump a little bit quicker that kind of suspends as much material as possible and then dumping so again we just continue that process as as I did previous just running the filter carefully take out the filter um, place possibly on a watch glass or whatever it can be removed dried and analyzed for your purposes okay um, this is called a Buchner funnel um, using vacuum off of a sink. Thank you.